Welcome to the Regrid Property app. Today we're going to walk through the export tool. Many of our users reach a point where they want to pull Regrid's data into their own applications, whether that's pulling our property data via spreadsheet into Excel or to pull our data as a spatial format into a GIS or mapping tool. And export will help you get there. So when you're going to export, there are basically two factors to consider that are going to influence which parcels end up getting exported and showing up in the file that you export. The first one is the boundary that you currently have selected on the map, and the second is any filters that you have applied. So let's talk about each of these in turn and start with the boundary. So here on the map, uh, I've selected the census tract in the Virginia Beach area for the sake of example. Uh, there is a whole boundaries uh, tutorial video, so please check that out. Um, and I won't go into too much detail here about how you can change to other boundaries. Um, but suffice to say, it's important to make sure that the boundary that you have selected is the one that's appropriate for your purposes. And also to note that you might want to check out our focus areas tutorial if you want to draw your own custom area. So let's assume that this is the one that we want for the sake of the rest of this video. Now that I've got my boundary uh, where I want it to be, the other thing that I can do to further narrow down is to use the filter tool. So as a, just a general sort of uh, context here, Within this census tract, we can see that we have about 392 properties by looking at the overview area. But let's assume that we actually don't care about all of those 392. And in fact, we only care about vacant lots, AKA properties with no structures. So I opened up the filter tool there and then I've clicked vacant lots. Uh, and you can see here that it worked away. And then uh, by clicking that, it's highlighted the relevant properties in this area. So down from that number in the hundreds, you can see that now we've actually drilled down to 43 properties, and let's assume that's what I care about. So I've got my list of 43 properties. Those properties are all the ones that exist within here. Um, check out our filter video if you want to learn more about the filter setup. You can also uh, filter by really any of the attributes that we have in our property data. Um, but let's say that we're good for now, and these are the ones that we want, these 43 properties within this area. So. If this all looks good, I would click Export Parcels, and that'll take us over to the Export tab. You could also just click it over here on the toolbar as well. So once you're done filtering, you can click on that button. And from here, it's basically a case of making sure that things look good and making sure that you're choosing the appropriate file type for what you want. So there are three file format options here, uh, Spreadsheet, Shapefile, and KML. Spreadsheet is what you want if you're going to open it up in Excel or any other kind of uh, you know, spreadsheet document software. Shapefiles and KMLs are both spatial and designed to be pulled into GIS mapping software. With your account, you get 5,000 spreadsheet downloads a month for free, after which you pay a per parcel price. And spatial formats, you always will pay a per parcel price which is part of the reason that applying filters and getting just what you want is important so that you pay as little as you can to get the properties that you care about. So once you've got your format set up, uh, you'll want to scroll down and make sure the rest of this looks good. So here uh, we talked about boundaries already, right? We, we are assuming that this is the right one for us. And then further, we apply the filter. So we've only got 43 properties here. This all looks good. Uh, you can see we've got a filter applied here, and then down at the bottom, uh, we can see the properties currently selected, the free records that are applied. Uh, you can see here in my account, I happen to have all of my 5,000 per month remaining ready to go. So you can see that gets deducted, and my total cost is zero. So let's say that I'm ready to roll on this. I'll click Review Data and Download. Uh, this will give you some coverage information here, and you can go back and look at this in depth in the list tab if you want. We encourage folks to do that. Um, but let's say that I'm good to go on this. This all looks nice. Uh, I'll click download here. As you can see, clicking download will take me to this page uh, where you have a data export. It'll say creating for a second while it runs, and then it'll change to download when it's ready to go. From here, I can click download. It'll open a tab and then it'll show up in my downloads bar and I could then take that resulting file, which in this case will be a CSV and open it up in, for example, Excel or Google Sheets. If you uh, were in a situation where you were doing a paid thing, say I wanted to do this exact, but I wanted to do a shapefile, 
uh, it would take you through a payment process where you would put in a card to be able to pay, you would say go ahead, and then it would get you to this page once you've paid. If you would like to see a history of all of your data orders, uh, you'll want to go back to your dashboard, and then from there you can click on the Data Orders tab. This Data Orders tab, as you can see, will give you a list of all the exports that you've run, and if you keep scrolling down, it'll also give you a section that'll show you your free downloads specifically. So if you ever want to know how many downloads you have remaining in a given month or something like that, that all lives here as well.